Hi everybody, welcome to this video on buffer stocks, a policy that's used by the government often to stabilise fluctuating primary commodity prices to protect both producers if the price goes too low and consumers if the price is under pressure of getting too high. The way to do this is to draw two diagrams. This is very helpful in showing how if the price is under pressure of rising, the government can step in and stabilise it, and how if the price is uh, on the verge of getting too low, the government can step in and stabilise it. All right? The idea behind buffer stocks is that governments can either release stocks that they've uh, held themselves, or they can buy up excess in the market themselves. Right, so let's show price on the y-axis on both diagrams, and quantity on the x-axis on both diagrams. You want to show equilibrium in both. And what you're trying to do is on both diagrams show the same starting price. Okay, so P1, Q1, yeah, and the same idea on this one. So you can see that I've got the same price on both diagrams. That's a good start. What you also want to show here is where the price is allowed to fluctuate. So show a band above the price, that means that the price is not allowed to go above the black lines to protect consumers, but also show a little band below the price. Okay, so what you have is a band above and below the price, this band here to protect consumers, this one to protect producers, you might say. On the left-hand diagram, let's look at a commodity that's under pressure of rising in price, maybe because demand has shifted to the right. In the market, that will lead to a price of way up here, call it P2, and that is not allowed to happen. Governments think that that price is too high, it's going to harm consumers. So what, they could, what could they do in this buffer stock scheme? Well, they could release some of the stock of primary commodity onto the market, which would shift supply to the right and take us back to P1, back into the band which is allowed. So what you would draw, take that price across, and make sure your new supply curve is parallel and cuts demand through that point. Alright, so parallel shift and call that S2. Alright, so if ever a primary commodity was under pressure of rising in value, governments can release supply, shifting supply to the right and getting back to P1, back within the band that's allowed. So that's how you can show the impact of a buffer stock if ever the price of a commodity was under pressure of rising. Let's move to this diagram here. What if um, the primary commodity was under pressure of falling in value. Well, you would show that by shifting supply to the right. So let's shift supply to the right. So maybe that's why uh, the price is under pressure of falling. Maybe that's because of a really good harvest or something. Good weather. And that would lead to a lower price at P2. Now that is not acceptable. Don't worry about the quantity because the whole point is we're trying to rectify this. So the government would say, well, that's not good enough. That price is too low. It's going to harm producers. We can't let that price continue. So what they would do is they would actually buy up some of this excess stock from the market, thus shifting demand to the right and taking us back to P1. So the way to draw this is to uh, extend your P1 line across and to make sure that your new demand curve cuts supply through that red dot. All right. So something like that would do the job and label that D2 and we get to a new price. On both diagrams, you can label your new quantity now in the market, where D2 cuts S2, all right? And that prevents price fluctuations in a buffer stock scheme. So that's how you draw these diagrams, okay? Uh, under either rising price pressure or falling price pressure, that's how buffer stock schemes work in solidifying and keeping prices stable. Always check on these diagrams that you've labeled your axis, yes you have, that you've labelled all the curves, lots of curves going on. So you've got to make sure that you label them accordingly and that you've labelled all your equilibria in the relevant places which you have done. So these are very funky diagrams. You've got to make sure that down below you can analyse exactly what you're showing here. But without the diagram, there is no start. So I hope that helps. Practice this one, construct it yourself, and you'll be rocking your final exam when you have to do this. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Love your support. I'll see you in the next video.